Linux. Let's work together today and accomplish something with Linux. Arthur C. Clarke has a quote that I really like, and that is, well, he's got a bunch of them. One of them is, uh, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And that's sort of where we are with our desktop computers. OS X and Windows sort of make the things that are happening underneath like magic. When something doesn't work, you don't really know why. And it's like, oh, I could, do I need to reinstall Windows? You know, what's going on? What do I need to do? What's happening? Linux is not really like that. Linux lets you see the, the magic behind the curtain. Linux lets you see how things, how things sort of operate. And so there was enough interest from the community and enough... Uh, enough requests on the forum they were like well i'm i want to be an enthusiast about linux and i can make it to the installer but i'm not really sure what to do next what do i need to do and that's really good that's a really good attitude to have and that's sort of an adventurous spirit that that you know everybody should have i'm going to tell you linux has absolutely taken over the universe i started using linux uh, in version 2.0.36 well a little before then i used it some on the like 1.3 kernel version, uh, doing uh, IP mask like basically uh, built an IP masquerading appliance with a friend, and that was a lot of fun. That was a ridiculous amount of fun because it was like we don't know what we're doing. We're gonna learn stuff. It's gonna be amazing. Learned more about networking and programming and how things are put together doing that than I ever would have. Uh, otherwise and so that was a really valuable experience Linux at that point in time <laughs> was very much not for the desktop I'm not even sure it still is but uh, it was very powerful it was very powerful uh, in terms of networking and the services that it offered from a networking perspective and services to, to the to the network and so since then Linux has basically completely taken over the universe. It's on phones, it's on routers, it's on appliances. You know, Samsung is moving to Tizen even, away from Android, which is still, you know, basically Linux. Um, Linux is on everything. There's stuff running Linux in your house and you probably don't even realize. Uh, Linux has been absolutely transformative for economies the world over. Pretty much the only place that Linux hasn't completely taken over the universe is the desktop. Uh, there are a lot of reasons, probably, I'm not going to speculate, but eventually it will. And it's perhaps less true in the United States, but it's more true abroad that I think less, uh, Linux is being used um, as a desktop operating system. The hardware has gotten to the point that for 99.9% .9 of what you would be doing, you don't need, I mean, even any, pretty much any computer of the last five years is sufficient to do pretty much anything you want to do except maybe gaming like the latest bleeding edge gaming and that kind of thing so tablets you know initially had supplanted sales of pcs people were doing more stuff on their phones and on their tablets than they were on their desktop computers and their laptops um and so i think now uh more than ever linux is getting closer and closer to being able to take over the desktop the thing that really holds Linux back from the desktop is not being able to run the applications that everyone is used to being able to run on the desktop. But even that is going away. There are people that are working on OS X emulation for Linux, and there are people that are working on Windows emulation for Linux with varying states of success. Often the games work better under Linux under emulation uh, than they do, than business applications do with uh, projects like Wine. So. That's interesting, you know, take take of that what you what you will. Linux runs virtual machines, so you can run a Windows virtual machine or an OS X virtual machine under Linux, and that's perfectly fine. The only time where that doesn't really work so well uh, is when you're running like the Adobe suite and you need hardware acceleration. It is possible if you jump through a ton of hoops to uh, pass through a piece of hardware uh, for the Adobe suite to be able to run under Linux, but uh, it's just, that's kind of ugh. But the funny thing is in Hollywood, at the really high end, so you're running the Adobe Suite, you're making movies, doing stuff in Photoshop. Well, Hollywood's already using Linux for all that stuff, you know, way to digital and and uh, you know all of their rendering farms and all that kind of stuff. It's all already Linux anyway. So why is this? Why is this a thing? Linux is going to take over the universe. You owe it to yourself to to learn Linux. As a result of learning Linux, running Linux, and having problems, you will learn not just how to fix problems in Linux but the architecture of the computer, software architecture, how things are put together, and these are the things that are really valuable. You'll learn about networking and how to do networking. It's no BS, it's no transparency. Uh, <laughs> going through my education, we used to joke that uh, 
a lot of the Microsoft documentation has like the Microsoft beer goggles on it. So it's like if you go through and you do your Microsoft certification for things like Active Directory and DNS and networking, uh, it's like beer goggles. You've got beer goggles on because how Microsoft is telling you DNS is and how they're telling you LDAP is with respect to Active Directory. It's not, they're not lying, but they're leaving a bunch of stuff out so that if you were to, I don't know, jump ship to Linux uh, or jump ship to another Unix, it would be like, wait a minute, how is this working? What's going on here? I don't, I don't understand what's, what's happening. Uh, and I think that's, you know, largely by design. At, at the time those things were architected, the philosophy in, in Microsoft's uh, organization was embrace and extend and then extinguish. So it's like, we'll, we'll embrace things that everybody's used to. We'll extend them in our own proprietary ways and then we'll extinguish, extinguish the competition. Uh, that backfired famously with Internet Explorer. They are like, we're gonna make Internet Explorer 6 so proprietary that everybody depends on us. And a lot of corporate customers wrote applications for Internet Explorer 6, and they're probably still using Internet Explorer 6. Meanwhile, the rest of the world got Firefox and later Chrome, so uh, that did not work in that case, but it's worked great in the enterprise. Um, and those kinds of things, those sort of antics with Microsoft Office file formats and those kinds of things are keeping people off Linux on the desktop. Meanwhile, Linux is on tablets and phones and everything under the sun other than desktops. But it's an inevitability that Linux is gonna be on the desktop. And in terms of daily productivity and what you can do today, Linux is a really good choice for a lot of workloads. For like your parents' computers, Linux is fine. I, they, they don't really need to run any proprietary applications and the applications that they need to run are there. Um, the other stuff that you get into with Linux is, you know, it's like, well, where do you find the applications? I don't understand. The Apple App Store, which was like, oh my God, this is so revolutionary. I could just browse applications and hit a button to install and I don't have to download an installer and deal with any of that mess. Linux distributions have had that since the beginning of time. Uh, all the really good popular applications that have been groomed, uh, sort of groomed for uh, their particular distribution have been available in the software repositories maintained by the distribution maintainer. So like if you run Debian or you run Ubuntu, the people that make Ubuntu and the people that make Debian the maintainers will take other popular applications and package them and store them uh, in their repository so that you can uh, have a very easy way of installing them. And so Ubuntu has a very nice browser where you can browse and see applications and install them. Ubuntu has had it forever. Ubuntu's text mode, um, a text mode package browser aptitude I've been using I don't know I think since it first came out which is probably like a decade and it's like a text-based app store uh, it's amazing I mean it'll it's well it's just it's a text front end it's a curses front end for apt but it's like oh I'm gonna install some packages I'm gonna do some stuff and and yeah sometimes you have to add some third-party software repositories is you know it's like we're not going to put non-free software in our repository but that's okay bob's going to maintain a repository compatible with my particular version of ubuntu or my particular version of whatever and i can use that to install other applications and in fact we're going to do that to install flash and chrome and those kinds of things uh on ubuntu because those are non-free uh programs there's another source you can get those but it's still sort of integrated into the the app store part of the uh, part of the operating system. But they don't call it an app store. They don't they don't call it any of any of those things. Any of that terminology. The terminology actually predates even you know app store. But it works in pretty much the same way, uh, except all the applications are free. So that's nice. Um, in terms of watching movies and videos and things like that, you'll you'll be pretty productive right away. So. I really think you're going to embark on an interesting journey. And I think the uh, Kennedy said it best. It's like, uh, you know, we choose to install Linux. We choose to install Linux and, and do it now uh, because, uh, uh, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. And because the, that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept and one that we are unwilling to postpone and one in which we intend to win and others too. And so that you've made it this far in the video, you owe it to yourself to help take up the mantle to learn Linux and learn how to further Linux. Not just because, you know, Linux is awesome and Linux is really amazing, but because you yourself are going to learn more about how these things work and how the, the these things are put together and how the application engineering and the kernel engineering and software engineering and 
and all these little things go together. Now, if you want to be a casual and just install applications and, and do work and things like that, I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I think that that's completely fine too. Uh, just by doing that, you will be raising the level of accessibility. When I was doing the Ubuntu video, which I've started, but I haven't finished, I've already filed two bugs on Launchpad. So Launchpad's uh, Ubuntu's bug tracker. So it's like, hey, I've run into these show-stopping problems, which will probably trip up newbies. Uh, I fixed it, but I don't know how to submit a patch for this. Maybe we should warn people, I don't know. But I haven't gotten anything back on that yet, so we'll deal with that later. But like I say, because you've made it this far, you're a special kind of person. And I think Linux is right up your alley. And yeah, it's going to be hard. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. And yeah, you're going to bang your head against the wall. But that's all right. We all do. And we've got a whole forum full of people that are willing to help you. So uh, game on. Let's, let's figure this out. Let's install Linux. So let's use it as our daily driver and see what happens. Mm -hmm.